It's Waxing Miracle, baby. Hello, Waxers, and welcome to Waxing Miracle with Mains and Dutch. I'm your host, Mains, and my colleague, who would never let his kids go to Carol Baskin's Tiger Sanctuary, it's Mr. Neil Dutton. How are we, Neil? It's it's so comforting that in you know such an uncertain time, the whole world can come together and unite on one ideal, and that is, my God, of course, she, she did it. There's many things that are undeniable truths, Neil. But the the main one at the moment in the world of in the world of coronavirus, isolation and Tiger King is that Carol Baskin got her tigers to eat her, her previous husband. Yeah. It, have you seen yeah, in the world I'm, of yeah. in the world of the Bundy documentaries on there, in the world of abduct, abducted in plain sight, have you seen a more insane documentary? Than the Tiger King on Netflix. No, because just before anyone had watched it, before anyone was talking about it, I saw it, and the back of my mind, I thought, do you know the characters who are going to have the least impact in this show are actually the tigers? (laughs) Um, It's people seem to be forgetting that these are not pets. When you use phrases like you know, a tiger went crazy. No. He went tiger. He went tiger, yeah. I, when he was People saying went crazy. When it says that there's more tigers um, as pets in America than there are in the wild, you start thinking, that's America, baby. Yeah. And of course, when watching it, and it's, um, Carol Maskin, hmm, wonder where she lives. A Florida woman? Why? There we go. There well, we I was going to say, the only, the only thing surprising about the show is that Joe Exotic is from Oklahoma and not from yeah. Florida. For those who... I, I think, actually, in terms of the rate of what the this show is, the more rapid fire than Abducted in Plain Sight, because I think Abducted in Plain Sight was only one was only one like feature, wasn't it? It was like um, an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. So they, they had the shocking fact, let you marinate on it for a bit, then hit you with another one. This is rapid fire. This is... You know, it's, I think I paused. I think I paused it the first episode six times to say to Kate, my wife, like, did they just say that? Do you know, yeah. all all I would say is for people who haven't watched it, like, you know, we're we're trying to keep this as light as possible. This show, we we're not de- delving deep into into health and politics, but you're probably going to be in your house about another six weeks, if not if not six more than that. So I would suggest getting this in your in your uh, in your watch list because it's absolutely fantastic and will, for a period of time, take you to a place that isn't the world you live in right now. Yeah, I mean, even if you get Disney Plus, you can't watch it that many times. You want to watch something else. So yeah, there's only so there's only so many Clone Wars episodes you can watch back to back. That is incorrect. But carry on. <laughs> um, this week. On Wax and Lyrical, um, again, we won't be talking coronavirus, really. We may talk about it in some NFL news. We've got two classic weird, weird worlds. Um, ba- both, I guess, in the new world of, of isolation, of, of what people will do to either get out or get involved in, in, in um, communication skills. Um, and then, with with free agency basically over and the draft upon us, we want to look from a fantasy angle. As Basically, this is a fantasy show to look at how the free agency has impacted certain teams and whether it's been a positive or a negative. And although there's been a lot of moves, there could be a sense of a bit of negative on it as well. A tad. A tad. Um, Dutton, um, fair story and a weird world. Um, video conferencing is, is all the world. All the hits, everyone's on it. All you hear now is Zoom this, Microsoft Teams that, House party, the other. What I would suggest is, um, you know, and it, you know, me and Neil know this. Me and Neil do a weekly podcast for nineteen, twenty weeks of the year, and then every other week post that. Um, for those who, who don't do that um, and are struggling with in the IT department on the podcast you're doing, hit us up. I'm at Mainzy Seven. Neil is End on Thirteen. If you hit Neil up, he'll just ask me the questions because some of your sounds not great, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not easy, but yeah. we can work it through. Yeah, some people's home um, Wi-Fi really need to be discussing this with your provider. <laughs> as I mean, I, in the past, suffered from Correct. terrible internet. My my first Wi-Fi in this house was abysmal. It was a gerbil on a but, wheel, Neil. It was a gerbil on a it wheel. Was a gerbil on, 
gerbil on a, a fat wheel, gerbil uh, on a wheel uh, with with asthma. Fat gerbil on a wheel with asthma that I occasionally had to give a uh, a tube of refreshers to just to try and kick it up while we were recording. But some of these other people, it's like literally, it's like House of Pain have come in and are doing the you know the number of jumping around that is going on is quite astonishing. So as I say, if you, if you need help, reach out to Paul, reach out to me, and I'll send you back to Paul because. Um, you know, you, you made your own bed line it. Um, on that, Neil, um, Boss accidentally turns herself into a potato during video meeting and can't undo it. A, w- a woman shared an hilarious moment. Her boss accidentally turned on potato filter during a video meeting and couldn't figure out how to turn it back off. With many places currently on lockdown, life as we know it has changed drastically. Thanks for that, in newspaper. And it's fair to say this time away from the office has proved tricky for some, again, understatement um, this week Lizette Ocampo the political director of People for the American Way I dread to think what they do found herself I think making they a like sim- Jesus <laughs> don't even want to know um, I'm going to say, say it's a Bible belt state uh, found herself making a similar type of blunder when she accidentally turned herself into a potato on the screen during a video meeting and couldn't figure out how to undo it one of her employees, Rachel Clegg, captured the screen grab in a hilarious moment and shared it on Twitter. It went viral. More than 500,000 people have liked the post with 122,000 retweeting it. Ever been on a video conference with work, Neil? I know your work is um, what's been known as sh- shut down at the moment, but do you do video conferencing um, in the civil service? Um, not in my department, no. Um, there are other departments where I do see because I go past. Um, I see that they do have like video conferencing suites, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they do have they have spider phones. You know, so you know, bravo for nineteen ninety seven there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, the the best one of this type was I've seen. You know, obviously, potato woman is up there. Man who goes was it a woman who went, didn't realize the camera was on, so took their laptop with them while they went for a dump. <laughs> um, and then there was, and then there was someone who, again, probably not realised the camera's on, or maybe he did, and he was bollico. And it wasn't, it wouldn't be so bad if he was bollico, you know, from the chest up. But he decided to stand up oh. at one point, and you know, I don't think his lad had been invited to the meeting. Um, but he came, but he turned up anyway. Be, he turned up anyway, but to be fair, he looked asleep, so I don't think he was contributing much. Um, yeah, we. I've I've never been. I mean, this. I've been on video. We've had Skype, where you've had multiple guests on with us. Um, yeah. It doesn't doesn't seem complicated, although we've had many a time of sitting there, you know, saying I've added him, but he's not. Ju- he's, you know, but at least we haven't looked at anyone who looks like a potato. No, we haven't, Neil. We haven't. Um, yes. Yeah. Bravo, bravo, the American way. Um, please don't send me any <laughs> merchandise. Yep. Uh, Next story, Neil, final one today. A dog found behind the wheel after high-speed chase in Washington State. Things people will do to not get caught out of out of uh, isolation. A very sweet pit bull. Not sure those two things uh, are joined together. Reportedly in the driver's seat after car crashed. Her owner faces multiple charges. A Washington State man who led the police on a high-speed chase on Sunday may have not actually been driving. Officers say that they found the suspect's pet pit bull behind the wheel after his 1996 Buick crashed. An unidentified 51-year-old male suspect from Lakewood, Washington, is now facing se- several charges. Can you guess any of them? That's um, right, driving under the influence, uh, yeah. reckless driving, hit and run, and f- felony eluding. I like that. Never heard that one before. The man allegedly struck two vehicles before he fled on into the seat five. One trooper reported seeing the pit bull in the driver's seat with the owner handling the steering wheel from the passenger side. Let's be honest, we all know how that conversation went. I'm not being funny, Betsy. You're going to have to drive because I've had too many to drink. Yeah, I've got the. I've already got a DUI. Uh, I've got a suspended license. I've had too many. You're going to have to drive. Now it would be cool, of course, if you know if it had been pit bull driving as maybe that would be a way of getting him out of our lives unfortunately neil it wasn't that pit bull it was a pit bull not the pit bull then we're all it, losers that yeah we are um if you love a weird way like we do during during this time we uh, live in of, one of the off season we live in one please don't send us those ones 
But uh, we expect many more. So if you've got some, send them to at waxing underscore lyrical on Twitter or to me and Neil. I am at mangy7 and Neil is at ndulton13. Neil, let's uh, drift over quickly and talk NFL. <laughs> Two bits of NFL news, Neil, that we want to talk about before we go at Fancy Impact. The NFL draft is still occurring. Does that blow your mind? Yes and no. Um, the NFL has been, of all the leagues, has been the biggest pusher of you know business as usual. We we proceed. I mean, we had free agency, uh, so if we're going to have free agency, it stands to reason they're going to have the draft. They you know saying you know, well we can't do a live event. We can't have the you know the meat market that the de- first night of the draft is. You know they're not going to be coming up to the Bellagio on their boats, but they're still going to do it. That you know that ultimately <laughs> I don't see what the problem is of having. Roger sitting at his desk and then ringing in picks and him saying, you know, the with the you know it, it worked very well for many many years, um, and you know Pete Rozelle or was it Pete Paul Tagliabue? One of them said he proud it was, it was Tagliabue. He was proud that he'd never in his whole time got a player's name wrong, and you know considering some of the names of players who got drafted in that time, that's quite impressive. The draft is one of those. It's more people watch the draft than watch the NBA finals. So more people will watch the names called of players they will not see in uniforms for at least six months than they will for a final of one of America's big four sports. So it's become a primetime event, and the NFL know that they have to have it because they're going to miss. You know, it's it's a way for the NFL to corner the market. There are no other sports in town. They're not mm. competing with anything. If the NFL throw the towel in now, they're just like everyone else. Whereas if they can, you know, if they can still have the draft then they come out of this fairly unscathed. I mean, granted, these players are not going to be able to, you know, train with their new teams. They're not going to learn the playbook. They're not going to get their install. They're not going to be able to pick up, you know, new schemes, new offences. It's going to be a massive disadvantage for teams like Washington, who've got 15 brand new free agents and a new head coach and offensive coordinator. It's going to be terrible. It means that the 2020 product, if we get one, is going to be sloppy and is not going to be something we want to watch. But the NFL still make money, so I'm not at all surprised. I think, I think, I think sometimes you you uh, you've nailed it, Neil, in the, in the making money situation. You've sometimes got to follow the money, right? And mm. you know, it's similar to situation to to soccer in the UK, where there's a lot of you know national leagues and and local things that are being cancelled, and you know, rightfully so. And then there's a lot of senior Premier League. Your UEFA, whatever, not being cancelled because then there's money that they will have to pay, pay back. I know Canal Plus in France have already said um, they're not paying any more money to the broadcasting rights because they pay in uh, chunks until someone plays some football. Um, for the NFL, um, they like to be the only show in town when they're on, and they usually are, apart from maybe share some time with baseball playoffs, but they try and schedule it around. As you said, in terms of live events, although it will be a bizarre live event, the drafts is, it will be the only show in town. Even if it's like, let's go live to Zoom in, you know, wherever it is to get the pick from Thingy, who goes back to Zoom in New York to Roger, who gets, you know, maybe they can uh, play some fake boo sounds as he goes to quote unquote podium. Um, as you said, I think that, you know, what it means is the players will have, you know, homes in terms of the nfl they won't be going there and as you said you know otas are never happening you know rookie mini camps not happening you know i'm with you in terms of based on what you're hearing you know july august is a is a long way away and not something that anyone can imagine doing stuff in if they are they may get to training camp i'm not 100 percent convinced right now but I think from the NFL's point of view, they they worked on the show must go on on free agency. It worked. I know it's slightly different the draft to free agency, but they just think they can do both. And okay, carry on. If Schefter is coming out and saying that he's appalled that the NFL is proceeding business as normal, I would assume Schefter has spoken to a lot of people around the league and is probably hearing an awful lot of people saying the same thing. I'm not saying Adam Schefter doesn't have an opinion of his own. That's not what I'm saying. But... I think when it came out that the NFL will discipline any employees who speak about this process anymore, 
I think a few people that Schefter's probably spoke to have said, I, this is ridiculous. And he's probably thought, it's fairly safe for me to say it. I'm, again, I'm not saying it's a, it is a take that Schefter's going to come and say, well, this is disgraceful. No, Adam Schefter knows that this is a joke. And he knows that if he says it, he's going to get the tacit approval of an awful lot of people around the league, if not their spoken approval. Yeah, absolutely, Neil, absolutely. Um, other news in the NFL, but again, the only the only one that seems to be breaking real news at the moment, and that's um, playoff expansion. For whenever the NFL does return, Neil, we will have two more teams in the in, in the playoffs. What, four more teams? No, two more teams. Two more teams. Two more teams in the playoffs. Well, one in each conference, conference, which means that the bye and the week off will only go to the number one seed. Um, thoughts, Neil? I fucking hate it. I, I think, I think, you know, it's it's product against profit, right? I think let's be frank, mm. it's a it's a money grab, and you know that's okay if that's what your business is run on. Um, we've watched the NFL for a long time. Is there been many times when you've thought, I really wish that team would have made the playoffs? No. I don't think so. Or, you know, it's really bad that that 11-5 and five team didn't make the playoffs. It doesn't happen that often. It does happen, no. but not often. And I'm okay to accept that so I don't get an 8-8 eight and eight team every year. See, you can call me you know, old-fashioned, if you will. I hate the fact there's wild cards. And always have. If it wasn't a money-making thing, your division winners would be in the playoffs. I hate the fact the Champions League is called the Champions League when champions don't play in it. Yeah, I, I, It's a concentration of excellence. You want, want the best teams. Now, every once in a while, there may be a seven seed that is better than the third seed once in a while. But we have this argument with you know the sixth seed, you know, or you know, San Francisco were a yard away from being the number five seed. Now, if they'd lost to Seattle in Week 17, had to go on the road, would they have got to the Super Bowl? Probably not. You know, we don't know. Yeah. But I think I I understand. You know, it's it's. I want the best teams to make the postseason because I want the best teams to win the Super Bowl. I don't want the team that sat on its arse until the end of November and then went on a little run and somehow blagged their way in. That's why, that's why, as much as, you know, oh, it's a fairy tale story, oh, they, they got in by winning their last three games. Yeah, I hate the sixth seed winning the Super Bowl because you were not the best team. You know, it's... it's I, mean, what, I think it's a different... Want, it's, 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 a, it's a different mentality, right? This is the classic... The classic... America versus the rest of the world debate on this. Because they're like, so all you're going to do is play the league and the team that wins, wins. And you're like, yeah. So you're not going to have some kind of event? No, Mm. we've had 38 events. They're called league games. We'll have a cup competition if you want. That's cool. We'll have a cup competition. What's Mm. the point in that? Like, why, you know, there's more than, more than it should happen. The best team doesn't win. And in leagues, I think, let's be honest, the best team, well, you know, we can all pretend it doesn't. But if you play 38 games and you get more points than the other teams, you're probably the best team. Actually, there's mm-hmm. no probably about it. You are the best team. So you just have to suck it up as the other teams and go, they were better than us. I mean, you you may remember, you may not, but in the early days of football when it was invented in 1992, the first two or three seasons of the Champions League the, the first two rounds were knockouts. Oh, yeah. and it was knockouts it into a league, stage, yeah. And then the two winners of the league went into the final. Yes. Now, again, it's, you know, oh, the best teams. No, these are the best teams because they all won their league. They are the champions playing in the Champions League. I mean, I forget which year it was. Was it 1983, one of the strike seasons? They said, to make it fair, we'll put 20 teams in the playoffs what? How does that make it? T- 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 that makes it less fair. Make, yeah, just make the whole season the friggin' playoffs. What? What is this? Yeah. I hate it's. It's a money grab. And yeah, oh, we'll have three three games on Wildcard Saturday. Yeah, the first one's always crap. 
I mean, granted, the Texans game was a bit exciting because, you know, of the Josh Allen Sherbert um, Sherbert intake. So we're going to have a first game. So that's going to be at what? Six, six o'clock? It's not. It's and not a. U, will... It's not going to be UK times. These are they. We're not playing a. No. We're not. There won't be a six o'clock game, Neil. It'll be half Nothing. half seven UK time. Then it'll be half eleven. Then it'll be half one. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, or half so, two. Uh, so that first game will be not the three seed against the seven seed. Probably an ass kicking then. And then we, you know, and and then what happens? The so team that plays, seven? On, you know. Yeah, two or seven. Two v seven, so it's even worse. Yeah. Yeah. But two v seven, three v six, and four v five. Yeah, what will happen is they'll make the team that wins on Sunday. They'll make them play the next Saturday. When historically it's shown that teams that play on the Sunday and then play on the Saturday again always lose. This is bollocks. I, I literally, I cannot disguise my contempt for this whole idea, which is why I, on my, one of the rare occasions, I drop an f bomb in this show because it is a, it's horrible. I mean. <laughs> I won't say anything now, but just wait for the first time the 17 games uh, season kicks in. Just wait to hear how happy I'm about that. Yeah, um, it's not good, but as JJ Zacharyson mentioned this week, uh, it starts in the 2020 season, which looks like it will start in 2022. Neil, um, free agency has finished. The big pieces of the puzzle have fallen. Um, and we wanted, or I wanted you to look at how that impacted certain teams from a fantasy perspective on certain parts of their team. It made sense. You're the fancy guy. We spoke about it with Charles. Well, when we say we spoke about it with Charles, Charles basically, you know, self, self, I can't say that word on the podcast, himself about Tom Brady and then laughed at other things. Uh, we're not going to do that. Uh, what we're going to do is look at each team or an area in each team, and you're going to give us an opinion. I'll also give an opinion, although mine is not as professional as yours. So, first team I want to look at, Neil, is Houston. Because um, I don't know if you know, um, they traded for a running back. So, um, in the world of running backs don't matter in fantasy, they've got three of the Fs now. So, what's the um, what's the what's the way to go? Avoid. Uh, David Johnson is finished. Uh, he looked awful last year. He ran with all the intensity of an old woman trying to cross the road. And you know, I acknowledge he may not have been fully healthy, but if, but if his problems are back, are back, knee and ankle, they're not getting better. As we uh, just asked Mr. Gurley. Uh, and I don't understand what mind conjures up the fact... I don't like DeAndre Hopkins. I don't want to pay him a new contract when we have him under team control for three years. Very manageable. He's not a toxic influence. He's not going to mouth off to the media, but I really don't like him. But I'll tell you what, I really wish we could pay David Johnson this year. I don't understand the what, how your mind gets to that position. I really don't. Um, especially, as I mean, how many C poems am I going to have to write or sing, sing, or you know, cry into my hands about Duke Johnson. That this guy's going to finish in the NFL and be the most one of the most unfulfilled players of all time. So Duke Johnson last year had ironic quirk had 410 rushing yards for the Texans. He had 410 receiving yards as well. So you're not, you're not going to entrust him to be the bell cow back, as it were, because for some reason the NFL doesn't think he can do it. So you get him into catch passes. You've got a quarterback who's not going to dump the ball off to his running back. Okay, this is getting slightly harder and harder for Duke. And now you're going to trade for David Johnson, who is a converted wide receiver at running back. This is a terrible, terrible idea. I mean, it, it just, it, it's just awful. I, I, I despise it. I just think that the Texans' offense... I mean, let's say David Johnson is better than he was last year. Yeah, but who's, who's Deshaun Watson throwing to? Yeah, Will Fuller for the six games he's going to play. All right, Randall Cobb, who hasn't been good since 2014. Fantastic. The wide, the, the tight ends that are just converted basketball players that we don't really use, this is tremendous. So I'm guessing we're going to see a lot of eight-man boxes here, Deshaun. Go out and be perfect. Let's ask the Eagles, how good is it watching your quarterback play when you know he has to be perfect because he has no margin for error from his playmakers? 
This is terrible. This is a fa- I don't want to. T- I don't want any of the running backs. I don't trust Will Fuller because he just doesn't stay healthy. And to be honest, I'm probably scared off Deshaun Watson as well. When he could have been, you know, he, his ceiling if he were unleashed in a competent offense, his ceiling could be the overall top scoring quarterback in fantasy football, and that includes Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. Now, I don't. I don't think I want. Him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, mass pandemic save Bill O'Brien from sack slash constant ridicule um, let's move on Neil um, Tampa Bay got a new quarterback don't know if you heard um, they moved the um, wide receivers number from 12 to 14 which I know you hate which is fantastic but I'm, in, I'm interested in the pass catches I don't need your I don't need number I don't need number one right now thanks um, it's not a wide receiver number. Okay, thanks. Um, you, you and my having to talk about it on another show. Um, t- Tampa Bay pass catchers. Is it weird to say that they will be a better team, but almost undoubtedly will be worse fantasy players? In fantasy, volume trumps everything because opportunity is the king. Now, are they going to be passing the ball 700 times? Are they going to ask Tom Brady to drop back 700 times? Probably not, because Tom Brady is going to be more efficient with the ball. So does this mean he's going to, you know... He... I'm not saying that just because you've got Tom Brady, your running game automatically gets better, because their running backs are not good. Ronald Jones is not good. Uh, obviously, the other guy, Peyton Barber, is now one of the phalanx of running backs playing for Washington. So they, um, they've got uh, Dare Obuwale, you know, to catch passes, but they may well take another running back. Their offensive line isn't terrible, but it's not great. Mike Evans, as we know, is friend Matt Kelly. We'll say Mike Evans is one of the great compilers. He's not actually very good. You just, you know, throw a ball up, catch ball, fall over. That's the Mike Evans story. Whereas Chris Chris Godwin can do an awful lot more. Then they've got Chris Evans then. What a strange Port Manchester there. Um, I think that their offense will be efficient because one thing that Charles did point out last year, even when James Winston completed passes to his wide receivers, he put the ball in places that made it almost impossible for them to do anything with once they'd caught it. Think of the Dutton pass. The only way that I'm passing the ball is you're going to give it me straight back. Whereas, you know, a lot of the times Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, it's, well, I've caught it. Now I'm going to get tackled. You'd assume Tom Brady, you know, in this mix-up of the Arians' offense and what Tom Brady can do well, they're going to put in place a scheme where it's get the ball into the hands of the likes of Chris Godwin and people of that description, get into their hands and let them make plays afterwards. So it's not going to be, you know, I'm taking seven set drops and booming this downfield and hoping it is going to be a let's let's get it in their hands, keep Brady clean, get the ball out quickly. So I think from a volume point of view, I can see Mike Evans' receptions coming down. He may well score more touchdowns because you know now you know now he can just be you know he's going to get the high volume in the red zone and the scoring areas. Whereas I think Chris Godwin, if he plays in the slot, which is where he played last year. Uh, when they play three wide, he comes into the slot. I think he's going to get peppered, especially as he gave up his number. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Um, I think you know, as you said, fancy's volume. So I would expect these players to get less volume, but I, but that's mm. because they're not playing from behind, and their quarterback isn't throwing thirty interceptions. Although if that happens, <coughs> if that happened, the world may explode next season. Um, yeah, but there we go. Um, <clears throat> Next team, Neil, uh, a what I see is an upgrade in on in quarterback uh, um, to Philip Rivers. How do we see Rivers impacting the Colts' offense? As we stand at the moment, the Colts' offense is it needs something because uh, T.Y. Hilton is he's the wrong side of the age. Um, barrier, as it were, he's going to start coming down. Uh, we know that he's actually a good receiver with the ball in his hands. He's not a, you know, I can chuck this long and hope he catches it. That's not his game. That's not him. You know, he's a get the ball in his hands, let him do some magic after the catch. So 
he can still be valuable. They don't really have a second receiver consequence. They may hope that Paris Campbell, yeah, who they got last year, yeah. Paris Campbell was something of a hybrid player at um, Ohio State. So he's, you know, these bit of running back, bit of wide receiver. Again, get ball in hand, see what he can do. We know that in the past, Phil Rivers has enjoyed having a safety blanket at tight end, preferably one who could move a bit, you know, before Antonio Gates got very old. So, you know, machine gun Jack Doyle. Again, could be could be regular, but I say the the main winner for me will be uh, Naeem Hines. Now, Naeem Hines is the second running back. He's behind Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack is the workhorse, as it were. Who's as I said last week, is not a terrible receiver himself, but they have shown in the past they don't really want him doing that. So they've got Naeem Hines, who's a good pass catcher, and we saw last year and the year before that Phil Rivers likes... Yeah, he'll take the check down. You know, if you take his yep. options downfield, fine, he'll just dump it off. Uh, that's what he had with Austin Eckler and Melvin Gordon. So I think uh, Naheem Hines could have RB2 value in PPR leagues by himself. Um, obviously, I don't think he's going to score a lot of touchdowns, uh, but I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility that he had upwards of 50 receptions. Um, we've seen that this team... We know that this team is going to give Rivers time to throw, but if T.Y. Hilton isn't open or Paris Campbell's not open, no, fine, dump it off, get it out, let you do, deal with it. We'll take six, we'll take five or six yards and go to the next one. So I think I'm, it's a bit harsh on Jacoby Brissett because you look at the two seasons he's been a starting quarterback. One, he came in immediately prior to week one and came in at half time of that first game. And yeah. the second time he found out a week before the season that he was going to be the starter. I'd love to see him be told in March you're going to be the starting quarterback this year, Jacoby, and see what that did for him. But it's it, I do not think, assuming Phil Rivers stays healthy, I don't think Jacoby Brissett plays another snap for the uh, the Colts because how do you go back to him? Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we, this doesn't happen. We don't say thanks, but we just want to see this through the year. It doesn't happen. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, yeah, we're going to do this and then we're going to go back to you. It doesn't really make any yeah. sense, so yeah, no. Uh, hang, hang around. Yeah. Hang around um, for us. Next team um, lost quarterbacks, um, and that's the Panthers' offense. Now, CMC, run CMC is still there. However, no one else is, especially people who hand in the ball. So unless they're doing wildcat all season, what's going on in Carolina in terms of fantasy? See, again, this is a situation that you've got Christian McCaffrey, you've got DJ Moore, you've got Curtis Samuel, and you've got Robbie Anderson, and you've got Teddy Bridgewater. So what does that tell me? Well, you watch more college football than me. What does Joe Brady do? Spreads them out. out, Spreads them out and let's get dump it off. Yeah. But who's who's throwing it? Well, Teddy Bridgewater. Well, yeah, I guess. It's... this, this offense is perfect for Teddy Bridgewater because they're not going to ask him to take seven step drops and you know hurl it downfield for Robbie yeah, Anderson true, true, fifteen true. times. It's going to be a get out your hands to DJ Moore, dump it off to Christian McCaffrey. You've got you've got Ian Thomas again, who's a big physical receiver. He's also quick and he's also good after the catch. This whole team is a yak attack waiting to happen. Now Teddy Bridgewater could be a high end mid QB two just because because he completes so many passes. It will be the statistic that Chal, our friend, hates, in that Teddy Bridgewater will finish a game with 300 uh, passing yards, but we've only actually passed for 75. <laughs> because it will be in the hands of his receivers. Go and get me the yak, the yak after this. this. I mean, again, it's is Christian McCaffrey going to get 1,000 and 1,000? Probably not. Because I think an awful lot of these players now are going to eat into that reception workload. So DJ Moore last year showed how good he is after the catch. It's not a particularly sticky statistic year from year, Yak, but I think his game is based on it. So I think someone like him, he's like, you know, someone like Golden Tate, who is consistently in the Yak leaders. Curtis Samuel can now be used properly as opposed to being a deep threat, whereas last year, Curtis Samuel had the most unrealized air yards in the entire NFL. And what that means for anyone who's unfamiliar with the term is when they passed to him, when they passed in his general direction, the ball traveled in the air for the most yards without being caught of any player in the NFL. He he left out on the field, and not all his fault, inaccurate passes and whatnot, over 900 receiving yards in air yards. He's not a deep threat. He's a gadget player. He's a... like 
People say Tony Hill is a deep threat. No, not really. Deshaun Jackson is a deep threat. Robbie Anderson is a deep threat. Tony Hill is someone, get the ball in his hands. Because, you know, how quick he is, how shifty he is. He makes magic happen with the ball in his hands, not when he's trying to track it 30, 40 yards down the field. I'm not saying he can't do that. Do that. I'm just saying that's not the best use of his skills. Someone like DJ Moore, Kurt Samuel. Robbie Anderson is there to keep them honest. Because, yeah, you, you want to take away the yak. Yeah, that's fine, but he's gone. He's single covered, and Teddy Bridgewater is accurate enough to throw the ball downfield to Robbie Anderson occasionally if he's open. So I think this is a situation that I think everyone in this team is going to be available at discount because it's going to be weeks where it's like, God's sake, is it a DJ Moore week? Is it a Curtis week? Is it Robbie Anderson week? Is it me and Thomas week? Is every week a, Cur- a Christian McCaffrey week? I don't know. Final team, Neil. Um, change of quarterback for them too. Um, from Mitch, Mitchell Trubisky to your friend Nick Foles, uh, how does that impact the Bears' offense? <sighs> the problem with the Bears' offense is an awful lot of people want to just say, you know, that everything is down to Mitchell Trubisky, and to a great extent it is because he's not a very good quarterback. But outside of Alan Robinson, who have they got? I mean. Anthony Miller, flashed as a rookie, hasn't done a lot since. He had a bad season. David Montgomery is decent, but if you're going to trade up for a running back, I think you want him to show more as a rookie than what David Montgomery did. Tariq Cohen is a nice pass-catching back, but again, is he among the league's elite? And (laughs) you signed Jimmy Graham in 2020 to a large guaranteed contract and put in a no-trade clause. Now, a no-trade clause for Jimmy Graham is akin to me going on a night out with a sign saying, sorry, ladies, I'm single. No one's interested. (laughs) It, it, It is not a situation that is going to be commented on. No one is going to ring up the Bears and say, yeah, you know, when at the trade deadline, you know, we, we just need one piece to put us over the top. What would it take to get Jimmy Graham? Oh, sorry, I can't give a straight face right by. You know, it's not going to happen. Um, so, is Nick Foles an upgrade? We've seen now. Is, is, Nick, it, Fel- Fel- is Nick Foles an upgrade? Okay, let's start with some questions. Is Nick Foles an upgrade? Okay, I've got th- two questions. Is he playing in Pennsylvania? No. Is he wearing green? No. He's not an upgrade then. I mean, granted, you've got this, you know, oh, but he's, he's reunited with John D. Filippo and Bill Lazor and whatnot too. He had a success pew, with, pew. yes, but he had a success in Philadelphia and he had a success with Bill Lazor in Philadelphia in 2013. An awful lot has changed since then. I, 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 I Nick Foles will always have a very special place in my heart, although the number of people, again, that I saw when it was at all... Oh, they're not trading him, but they're not not trading him. Oh, get him back to Philly. <clears throat> Go and boil your head. <laughs> Seriously. Um, I like Nick Foles. I like Alan Robinson. I, I I wonder whose cat Alan Robinson ran over to be saddled with the quarterbacks he's had to play with. I would say we said this about, you know. We're not doing, this, the, on- we're not doing Johnson. the Andre Johnson thing again, are we? It's yeah. a it's a horrific array of wide receivers, uh, uh, run, uh, quarterbacks that Alan Robertson's been stuck with, no doubt. Yeah, um, and you know he showed last year that he was still good with Mitchell Trubisky throwing him the ball. So I think he can still deliver. And the major thing we have to worry about with Nick Foles is he's never played sixteen games in the season. So your choice is you've taken on this large contract, you've traded for him, you've given up a you know assets that you don't really have. Are you going to get 16 games out of him? And if you don't, you're bringing in Mitchell Trubisky because you're not cutting him because you know, there's no point. You know, he's, it'll cost you money still, guaranteed money-wise. I've got people saying, you know, he, oh, they might pick up his fifth-year option. Why? Why would you want to? Why would you want to spend 20 million on someone who you've you've already said now this season we don't want you in 2020, but stick around. We'll come back to you. No, you won't. And um, their offense is it's it's in a pickle because it's not very good. And it was very good for one year. And you know, we, we we've criticized Matt Nagy. 
well, now we can't, now, you know, criticise Matt Nagy for saying, you know, almost saying, I didn't want this quarterback. I can't run my system. Well, now you've gone out and got your quarterback. For better or worse, this is who you wanted. This is who you've got. If they're 2-14, and 14, he's gone. The whole, that, that, Hopefully. That, that whole, whole operation is getting blowed up by the by after the whatever season it is they play next whatever numbers they finish with that is getting blowed up yeah Ryan Pace if let's assume they, there is a 2020 season if they do not have a winning record or a, in touching distance of one after Thanksgiving Ryan Pace is clearing out his office ahead of time absolutely absolutely Neil that's it on the fancy stuff and um, before we go is there anything you will be writing opinions on over the next few weeks next few weeks I am taking part in, again in the, the Roto Underworld world famous draft kit so I'm doing team insights for them they will not be available immediately they'll be going as part of the draft kit which will be available nearer to the time uh, also going to be doing something for Rotoviz about uh, best ball risers and fallers in ADP so players over the last few weeks who's you know the average draft position is going up and players who's are going down um, so that will be out soon. Um, that's pretty much it. Say so follow me on Twitter at ndalton13 for more bollocks. Um, I am at Mindy7. Um, one thing from me, stay safe, stay away from humans. Believe you me, it's painful and it's difficult, but it works. Um, I hate to use science um, while others don't, but that's the way I roll. Until next time, Ladies and gents, these top guys are out.